Christopher. Let's go. It's Pharrell. Coast to coast. Steaks, chicks, stacks. You and I are going to make a lot of money. It's Pharrell. Coast to coast. It's Pharrell on a bench, coast to coast, in the biggest way possible. Hanging out the bad seat, the moon, the bad apple, the bad attitude, the hair, bad out of bad tape, bad lot, bad dude, bad breath, bad attitude, bad vibes. We are live in the Magic City studios in the Varela Palacio, right across the river through the woods from where Granny loves a little back deck toke of the 818 OG, as long as it's in New York City. The big apple. People dressed in plastic bags, so ready to try to hit some kind of fashion, shake it up, stupid. it. I'm up in the camel, fly to fly to fly to fly to fly to fly to party up. Rats on the west side, bed bugs uptown. What a mess, these tiles are tattered, my brain splattered all over, man. And it's only rock and roll, but I like it. Yes, I do, should do that. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, woo, woo. I think I might have caught some from Keith. Oh, woo, woo. Hey, what's gigging? I'm Pharrell with your boy Carver High this afternoon. Big Frank the Tank running it along with Preston Pearson on a pain-free Friday. I'm doling out minutes on the mahogany, waxing it up 100, 200. All right, let's take a look, first of all, at the birthday roll call. Uh, CJ Cron, 34. Eduardo Escobar, Pablo's cousin, 35. Mike Greer, 48. Warwick Dunn, 49. Ronaldo Turnbull, 58. Danny Jackson, 62. He was a badass. Royal, Alex English, 70. Speaking of finger rolls, Mercury Morris, 77. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Mike Tomlin's weekly words of wisdom. We'll belt those out today on C to C. Plus, Shane Steichen knows this is a playoff game for the Dolts at home against the Texans. Mike Vrabel will have the Titans ready, according to Vrabel. Plus, Josh Allen knows his past success doesn't matter on Sunday night at the Hard Rock in South FLA with all of that gorgeous hunk, hunk, hunk. Marenzi will join us this very hour from Vancouver to gamble heavily. Todd Bull says, uh, you can't ask for uh, more than controlling your own destiny. Tampa's at Carolina. Matt Lefleur says that his team is much different than last year's that lost a win and in final game. This is huge. They're hosting the Bears. Seattle's at Zona. Jonathan Gannon says Kyler is the Arizona quarterback of the future. Dak knows the Cowboys need to take care of business in Landover at the dump. Cowboys and Commanders Sunday. Philly and the G-Men at Snoopy. We'll get into all that. Plus, the Sharp report today, breaking down the Dolts and Texans game. Our boy Warren Sharp. Bill Belichick is only focusing on the Jets in the midst of rumors that have been going on for months that it's his last season with the Pats. We'll see. Minnesota at Detroit. Devontae Adams wants Antonio Pierce to stay as the Raiders coach. Denver at Sin City. Carson Wentz will start with the Rams. Sam Darnold for the Niners. Rams, Niners at Stonewash. Denim jeans. Patrick Mahomes will sit Sunday. Blaine Gabbert will go Chiefs and Chargers at Get High Stadium. Joe Flacco will sit. Driscoll will start for the Browns in the jungle. Browns, Bengals in the Queen City. Awful quarterbacks this weekend against the spread. Least bet teams, public teams, most bet dogs on the money line. Plus, Dr. Shivago today, Dr. David Chow from Sports Injury Central at Pro Football Doc on X will go through all the injuries league-wide with the doc plus davis maddock from fantasy sports today on saturday mornings you see him on c to c he's got some picks for tonight's games and there's plenty of them so we'll talk to davis maddock today on top of everything else the nuggets at the buzzer the joker half court heave count it it falls and they covered two and a half for uncle futrelli check out oh Dre Green set to return to the Warriors facility amid his indefinite suspension. He's found Jesus. Bucks beat the Spurs 125-121. The Spurs miss a two to tie in the final seconds. A deep corner pocket shot by Jones. Brick. Orlando Magic will retire Shaq's number, the first player in franchise history to get the honor. 
Giannis and Shea Gilgis named players of the month for December. Tonight's games, it's a bevy. Jazz at Boston, Atlanta and Indy, Oak City in no sleep till. Washington, Cleveland, the Knicks are in Philadelphia, Charlotte at Chicago, Minnesota at Houston. You got the Clippers and Pals down at the Smoothie on Bourbon Street, Portland and Dallas, Orlando at Denver, Miami, Phoenix, Detroit to Golden State, Memphis against the Lakers at the Crypt, and Toronto, Sacramento at the Golden One. Rich Sermonello will join us from the Maxwell Club with a Maxwell Minute today. Kansas State quarterback Will Howard transferring to Ohio State to be the Buckeyes' new quarterback. We got your NHL East All-Stars, NHL West All-Stars. Connor Bedard becomes the youngest All-Star in NHL history. He is a badass, and he's only going to get better, and he's already made the All-Star game representing the Chicago Blackhawks. Speaking of the Blackhawks, they're in New Jersey tonight at the Rock against the Devils. That won't go well for them. Carolina and Washington in D.C. And Pharrell Peg is in Anaheim at the Pond. Two teams going in different directions there. Arizona destroys Colorado last night by 47 in college rack. Our boy Tad Boyle's buffs didn't show up in Tucson. James Madison improves to 14-0. A post-game fight breaks out between JMU and the Raging Cajuns down in Lafayette. Guess they didn't like losing. They were down three with nine seconds to go, Carver High. They missed two threes. JMU got both rebounds, got fouled, and made all the free throws and won by seven and covered. That was a miracle cover for me last night with JMU. Counting money was what I was doing late night. Counting money. Big night betting. Tonight's college basketball games. UConn goes to see the Butler did it in Indy. At the Hinkle, tough place to win. Illinois and Purdue at Mackey in West Lafayette. That is going to be a hell of a game tonight. They are both good. Underwood's team is tough. And certainly you got Purdue and Edie. I couldn't believe the spread in that game, Carver High. The Mariners trade Robbie Ray to the Giants for Mitch Hanniger and Dee Sclafani. Jordan Montgomery wants to go back to the Rangers. He doesn't want to play for the Yankees again. The Yanks and O's are among teams pursuing Dylan Cease. Blake Snell interested in the Yankees, allegedly. A lot of people think he'd get lit up in that band box. Michael Brantley announces his retirement, and we've got Adam Kaplan today. You know he's going to break down Saturday's doubleheader in the NFL. He'll give you all the injuries and all the key skinny that you need to know going into the game Saturday and Sunday. And certainly more important than just talking about guys that aren't going to be able to play and guys that are going to be able to play is the fact that in the second segment, in the double shot, we will have bust a cap in your ass where Adam doles out his weekly spread hits in the NFL. So we got a lot going on today. Tons of games in the NBA tonight. A lot of guests. It's all revolving quickly and evolving into another C to C on a pain free Friday. Go with us. going in, it hit, it hit the upright and bounced out and did not uh, go in. There's more scoring in an MLS soccer game than there is uh, this cotton ball. The Chargers didn't know what the hell to do with uh, Staley for years. They're a clown show in chief. Denver's got this issue, Gabe. Like, the Chiefs must just be sitting there going, wow, what a bunch of brain trust we work with in this division. Sports Rage Late Night, only on Sports Grid. <laughs> Some things involving their offense the past couple weeks and moving forward. Number one last year, number 25 this year. Much slower. Jalen Hurts is taking far longer in his dropbacks. He's holding on to the ball for longer. And yet, despite holding on to the ball longer, he's throwing the ball shorter. Now, that doesn't make any sense. If you're holding on to the ball longer, it should be because there's routes developing further down the field. Pharrell Coast to Coast. 
only on SportsGrid. We spent all offseason where the NFL said, hey, just so you guys know, running backs don't matter. If we then this year give the MVP to a running back, the irony, I am disappointed that they lost to FAU because secretly I don't really like this FAU team very much. I I don't know. They're just not for me. And now they've completely legitimized the Owls. Game time decisions only on Sports Grid. The Bostonian versus the Book. 56% is really good. Anything close to 60 is retirement mm-hmm. level stuff. So there's way more people on the lower side of that. You have to learn how to manage that. This is a game of give and take. I mean, or come in quick and hit him and get out. The Bostonian versus the book. Sports Grid. Your 24-7 sports wagering network. Fantasy Sports Today. They were saying there's no way. He could not possibly do this. He won't hold out. Pro League Soccer the powered by Mark. scoring teams in the league. They have 80 goals so far. College Football Today. The Hawks team total in the first half. Point five, zero point Pro five. football today. Interesting props in this game, but I would be cautious laying this number here with the Houston Texans. In game live all access. In terms of these wild cards, in terms of the playoff. In game live prime time. I, Rich, I don't know, man. This is this has just been one of those games that doesn't make a lick of sense. In game far. live overtime. You want to give you over three to one on a pretty good team. It's hard not to take some flyers. Football full circle. Well, NFL officials stink. They always will stink, and they'll always ruin the game. Yeah, that's, that's just part of what it is. It's smarter to be on sports grid. Oh, what's up? You watching the game? Or maybe the one later? Put a little BetMGM action on it, and now any game becomes the game. When you got overs and unders, you're in it every time they throw the ball, kick the ball, dribble the ball. Maybe it's not even a ball. Who needs a ball? Now that bet's got you watching every inning, half, round, period, set, hole, a lap. Right from the edge of your seat. Hit him with the promo. sleeping with people i mean i like uh having relations but i don't like sleeping with people carver high i mean honestly uh you know telling me to quit snoring roll on your side you're snoring too much you're farting Can, just leave me alone can i have my own bed like i've heard i've read in the wall street journal and others that all these people now are sleeping in separate rooms i am in full favor of that everyone needs their own space and they need no grief from their wife or husband when they're sleeping. Is there anything worse than having someone kick you or wake you up in the middle of the night to tell you you snore too much? Mind your own business. By the way, uh, I think everyone should get the Sports Grid app. It's a lot like my new sleep apnea machine. Uh, it's free, unlike the apnea machine, but it does uh, have amazing features on it, including you can watch the network, listen to the network, and get in-game odds and analytics and videos and stories and news and highlights all on the app free ios or play store boom and then did i tell you about this bet mgm deal the 1500 first bet offer for all new bet mgm account users how do you get it download the app on ios or android or betmgm.com use the bonus code sg1500 deposit at least 10 bucks into your new account place your first wager and receive up to fifteen hundred dollars back in bonus bets if it loses so like if you bet 750 and lose you'll get 750 back if you bet a thousand you lose you get a thousand fifteen hundred you bet lose you'll get fifteen hundred in bonus bets back once the wager is settled now uh as far as the the sleeping with people uh i'm not having it carver high if 34c wants to give me grief while sleeping she will be dealt with accordingly yeah, uh, you need to have, I guess, that little bit of a buffer, right? I mean, your buffer yeah. is uh, obviously behind uh, on the other side of a wall. Uh, is yes. what your buffer is uh, for 34C. 
my buffer is probably like, you know, three and a half feet or two feet uh, right there. That's about my buffer uh, at night. That's about all that I get. Uh, so you right have first. to, you have to sleep with your wife. No questions asked. Well, I mean, I don't have, uh, you know, I don't have anywhere else unless I would like to right. uh, hit the, the couch. Sofa. I mean, that's, that's the spot. I mean, that's where I have to be. Uh, so she, I mean, she probably don't like me in there. I'm, I'm sure I got no idea how loud it is when I'm going. Uh, so I guess well, look, she doesn't I have me, extra so. rooms and I have, uh, yeah. you know, so one, which is the one I prefer, he doesn't know, but when he goes back to college, I take over that room and he has wow. no idea that I'm in there styling, uh, when he's gone, he thinks that it's just left like empty while he's gone. Yeah. And then I have my, and then I have my office, which has a bed in it, but, uh, it short sheets me. It's got, it's like six foot one and I'm six foot four. So there's nothing worse than jamming up at the end of the bed with a wooden headboard that jams yeah. you up and you're too tall for the bed. So I refuse to sleep there. I turn that into a uh, hoodie and basketball clothing bed. I put all my basketball attire on there. Uh, you know, I, you've got uh, at least some situations there where you can navigate. I still, of course, have Little Willie down the hall. You got oh. Ray Lewis running around. You know, oh. I still got all those things uh, to navigate, which kind of limits the areas where I can go uh, if something like that had to happen. So that's just uh, I'm just I'm out of rooms right now. Uh, you know, Big older, Frank I guess said that say. his dad snores so bad you can hear him uh, outside the room. And the neighbors have also reported to the police that they've heard strange sounds in the night. All right, it's time for our weekly words of wisdom from Mike Tomlin. Uh, it certainly is as we get ready. Week 18, we have made it. Uh, let's get it on. A lot is at stake, including for the Pittsburgh Steelers, who will play the first game of the weekend tomorrow in Baltimore against the Ravens. Every week we have done this. It's not going to now. Is this the last week? Who knows? Maybe next week we get one for Wild Card Weekend. Oh. We'll find out. Here's Mike Tomlin's weekly words of wisdom. It's blood in the water when they get you one-dimensional. Uh, you get behind in the game and things of that nature. And so sometimes success breeds success like last week. Shots. Um, they got up on Miami, man, and it just it just flowed. And so um, we, we, we better stay close. We better do a good job of, of making them earn it. We can't give up field flipping plays or or Shot. easy touchdown like scores we got to make them earn it we got to keep the score down uh we got to play tough we got to tackle and so that's where we are um it's chestnut checkers they know us we know them um, i think that's one of the things that makes this matchup entertaining from a fan's perspective and so um we're preparing with an edge for a lot of reasons but first and foremost uh because it's must win for us there you go. Oh, uh, let's go. Look, um, you know, no one literally on that Baltimore team is playing. They got a bunch of backups playing. Yeah. And yeah. I'll give you this. They're better than most teams at doing this. Uh, we've seen this little mm -hmm. trick before where none of the Ravens are playing, but then their backups go out and kick ass like Huntley and et cetera. So I am concerned no matter what. I understand why the spread is what it is because they got nobody playing and the Steelers are playing for all the marbles. Steelers need to win and then get a loss by either the Jaguars or the Bills on Sunday and they will be in the playoffs. Uh, there are several other scenarios that involve ties, but let's be honest, we're not going to talk about those. This is down to a flat three. Scotty. So anybody who wanted those fours and three and a half, those are gone now. Flat three for the Steelers, flat 35 for the total. The other thing that makes it difficult, Scotty, is like you said, they're used to playing this way and the style they're going to play will drag the game down, right? With Huntley in there, you know they're going to run it. They're going to keep running the football. They're going to try to control clock. It's probably going to be a low scoring game and that's what's going to make it tricky. I'm going to take the points with the Ravens because the dog always seems to cover in this matchup. Yeah, just like yesterday, we said the points uh, yesterday, you know, I got it at four, right? Yeah. So it didn't move to four for us yesterday. Yep. And then yeah. it's, you know, they say it's open to three, it's at three, but it went to four. And that was mm -hmm. when I got the four. I said to you yesterday, it's a Tucker problem for me that you can't beat this team by, by four, uh, that Tucker will kick a field goal. Uh, I think I'm, you know, I'm pretty certain he's playing. He just goes out and yeah. kicks field goals. So I'm worried about him. I am worried about Huntley. 
I am not worried about the Steelers. They've been playing great football for, you know, two weeks in a row, dominating, I think, with uh, up front and running the ball. And one of the reasons I think they're blocking uh, so well up front is Broderick Jones, the badass. He is pancaking players. He is a monster. This guy is going to be an absolute stud moving forward. This is his first year, and he's pushing people around already. And he means business. And that guy is going to get better. Imagine how good that guy is going to be in two years. I mean, he's going to be the most dangerous offensive lineman in the NFL. He is a savage. What they need to do is run the ball his way, Warren and Najee, and beat the Ravens. That would be the recipe for success. Uh, Injury report isn't that bad for the Steelers either, Scotty, although uh, Minka Fitzpatrick questionable. He hasn't played in weeks. Uh, I think the Colts was the last time that you saw Minka out there, but he is questionable. Maybe the Doc uh, will have some word on that for you later on, Dr. Shivago, uh, when he comes and visits with you for the injury update. Uh, All right, so there you go, Ravens and the Steelers. The night game will be the Texans and the Colts. We will get more into this after you talk to Gabe. I have some Shane Steichen for you. We'll also feature this later on in the Sharp Report. Win and get in between the Colts and the Texans. We'll do that later on, Scotty. Yeah, and I got to tell you, I think, um, you know, I'm on tomorrow, one to four with uh, the mayor of Miami, Joe Ranieri. And, you know, we're going to be doing college basketball out the end. But the reality is this, is that at 430, that Steeler game is going to be kick-ass. And then to have the Texans and Colts after that at night, I actually think... Saturday's two games are better than Sunday's. My best bet is Michael Penix to over 309 and a half. Let's shop around. Let's get packed in and let's get the best of the numbers here. So I believe that Michigan in this ball game can run the football, work off a of play action. They can move the football, put up points. Does fall on McCarthy, but I like Michigan's chances in this ball game. National championship set. Washington against Michigan. Brothers in arms today. This is it. This is the most excited I think I've ever been for a day of work in my entire life. Quarterback at quarterback. We're going to lay some juice. We're going to have some dog prices. We're going to go right in the middle. Because I don't know what they're doing. To me, they're in a complete rebuild, Kev. Go run, run, run. That's where overbackers on this 51 and a half shot. So right now, we saw a little bit more over money, but it's hovering right around. The winner of this game will be the division. Four. I don't care if they win because all we care about is the money, baby. The money. Pro football today. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. We spent all offseason where the NFL said, hey, just so you guys know, running backs don't matter. If we then this year give the MVP to a running back, the irony. I am disappointed that they lost to FAU because secretly I don't really like this FAU team very much. I I don't know. They're just not for me. And now they've completely legitimized the Owls. Game time decisions only on SportsGrid. North Carolina, we've got new sports books operating for uh, licenses. And, you know, a lot of news always coming out of there, one of the fresh sports uh, betting states. Well, they're a little behind the ball there, so I don't know if they'll be at the starting line in North Carolina. Um, but, yeah, a really interesting mix of, of applicants this early on so far. Newswire, only on Sports Grid. Sports Grid. Your 24-7 sports wagering network. Fantasy Sports Today. They were saying there's no way. He could not possibly do this. He won't hold out. Pro League Soccer They're powered by Marco. scoring teams in the league. They have 80 goals so far. College Football Today. The Hawks team total in the first half is point five zero point five. Pro Football Today. Interesting props in this game, but I would be cautious laying this number here. With the Houston Texans. In game live all access. In terms of these wild cards, in terms of the playoff. In game live prime time. Uh, Rich, I don't know, man. This is this has just been one of those games that doesn't make a lick of sense. In game live overtime. You want to give you over three to one on a pretty good team. It's hard not to take some flyers. Football full circle. Well, 
NFL officials stink. They always will stink, and they'll always ruin the game. You know, that's, that's just part of what it is. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. I always love to hook up with Marenzi uh, from Vancouver every day on Coast to Coast. Don't forget, Sports Rage uh, weeknights at 10 on Sports Grid TV, Sports Grid Radio, Sirius XM 159, Sports Byline, and their great radio affiliates. And, of course, Sundays, pain day, 1 o'clock Eastern, 10 West. It's pain day with Marenzi and Pharrell in-game level access for all of the 1 o'clock Eastern NFL games, of which there's a six-pack this week, but there's so many other games on top of it in the four o'clock hour and Sunday night, that it's just going to be a thick day of action. So catch him tonight. And then he can always get his best bets on his uh, acts at sports rage. All right, Marenzi, tell me about next year's uh, 12 team playoff, where those locations are for those games. You said to me that the Rose bowl will be one of the quarterfinals. Yeah, that's right. There's been so much talk over the last uh, couple of days as far as locations. Uh, people want the the championship game to be at the Rose Bowl all the time. Uh, but, of course, we're changing the format next year. We go to a 12-team playoff, and it's actually pretty cool as far as the dates uh, are concerned and and the time. They sort of step up right when the NFL, in between the NFL and everything. But So it's a 12-team playoff next year, guys. It opens up, Scotty, on campus. So the first couple of games are on campus. We should we should note the top four teams get a bye. So, you know what I mean? Like, so it's not really going to change that much for the top teams. They're only going to have to win two games still. So it's going to open up on campus Friday, December the 20th. So we've never had a college football playoff game on a Friday night before like this, Scotty. So there's going to be a Friday night on-campus playoff game, December the 20th. Then there's three games on campus on the Saturday. Uh, but then let's jump to the quarterfinals. New Year's Eve, December 31st, 2024. The Fiesta Bowl is one of the quarterfinals. January 1st, the Rose Bowl is one of the quarterfinals. The Sugar Bowl is one of the quarterfinals. And the Peach Bowl in Atlanta is one of the quarterfinals. Uh, we'll get right to it. The semifinals uh, next year. One of them is in Miami, the Capital One Orange Bowl. The other one is at Jerry's World Cotton Bowl Classic National Championship game next year, Scotty, in Atlanta, Georgia. At the Benz. South uh, Hollywood of the South. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> like people, people won't listen. People talk about um, whatever. Nobody wants record. to go there. Nobody, nobody wants know. to go there. Nobody, nobody and wants to this. go there. They don't. This is why. They, they this is don't. why, though. People were saying, like, um, oh, it should be in California and the Rose Bowl and stuff, but college football is, like, massive in the South. So it's in Atlanta. And the year after, actually, we can look ahead, too, just looking ahead to uh, to 2025. The championship game is at uh, Hard Rock in Miami. Well, now that's somewhere people want to go. Now, listen, here's the difference. One, you go to the one in Hard Rock, and after the game, you go with Marenzi and Pharrell to the casino and gamble and drink all night. The other one, when you leave the game, you run for your life to get to your car without getting raped, shanked, or murdered, or shot. Let's just, that's this year. That's next year's game. Good luck. I used to leave the Thrasher. I'll go to the running. Fiesta Bowl. I was running to my car, <laughs> and I was in the media lot, and I was still, like, looking both ways. I'm like, and then not only that, you can, uh, you can barely make it to your car alive, but within 20 steps of your car, you can buy crack rock which is also a great deal if you're going to the game you can get in your car it, it's like drive through they got it right there in the parking lot you're good to go nobody wants to go there now i lived there i loved it no one else loves it okay my wife hated it everyone hates it there no one wants to go there for anything ever. sec country no one wants to That's go there. what ever i know for anything it is it is what it is i didn't make the uh i didn't make the, the schedule well, well, they should let you make the schedule because you and I know where to put things. Vegas, L.A., Pasadena, and Miami. I got no problem I with can that. Live, I can live with the Glendale, Arizona stuff. The Fiesta Bowl was part of this. I, I can yeah. live with that. But it, now, like you said, it. Scotty, it's boring this there, way, though. too. It's boring got, there. 
it is, but at least you have there's there's amenities. No, no. Um, the only thing uh, you have there is the only thing you have there is coffee and I working a bone down the street in the middle of the night. It's a hundred degrees outside. <laughs> We're walking down the street, smoking fat. Are we on the air right now? We are. Don't hey, talk I did the about show. This. I did the show at uh, Bet MGM right next to the stadium at the Super Bowl. I remember uh, that, was, that. That was pretty cool. You know, that was pretty cool. I like to go back and that just hang cool. out at the book and get yeah. lit up and go into the stadium instead of yeah, just same doing thing. show. Same thing with me and Mafia. We went out for a burger and then we both vomited for 30 hours. Well, where'd you go? You I, went to Dan Marley's Thunder Dance. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> That's Thunder all I heard Dan. from everyone. I said, like, man, I went to Dan Marley's. <laughs> I'm not feeling well. <laughs> It's like, I ain't going anywhere near that place, bro. That, that is the best nickname for him, Thunder Dan. We Now, we call Bad Beats now on on Coast to Coast, and everything I do, Bad Beats now are no longer Bad Beats. They're just Marley's. That's what we call them from now on. All right, <laughs> let's talk, uh, before I get fired, let's talk about your Bills and the Dolphins. That is what matters. Massive football game. Your Steelers are connected to this in, in a way. I know. I know. You know, you want you want the Buffalo Bills to lose. The Bills would already be in the playoffs if the Steelers lose going into this game. Listen, Buffalo, Buffalo are dialed in right now. They're getting it done on a weekly basis in different ways. You have a very, very beat up Miami Dolphin football team. Now, there's not a doubt in my mind that the Dolphins don't want to lose this game. They want to win a division. They've been cruising all year. They don't want to find themselves right. suddenly as a wild card team after all of this. But at the same point in time, they also have to field a team in a real game uh, in two weeks. Um, so they, McDaniel's in a tough spot here. I think Buffalo will win this game, Scotty. It's down to two and a half right now. It's come down fine, whatever. I like Buffalo on the money line. I think Buffalo will win this football game. But without being – and the thing is, subconsciously, too, I should know, guys, team like the Steelers are in this spot, the Bills are in the spot, the Jags are in this spot. Teams that need to win to get into the playoffs, all right? In the last two weeks of the year, teams that need to win to get into the playoffs against teams that don't are actually 70 and 102 against the spread only, Scotty. So basically what I'm saying is you you, you win basically at a 70% clip betting against the Pittsburghs, betting against the Jags, betting right. against the Bills. Because the theory is if you – if you need to win the game in the last week of the year to get in the playoffs, you're probably just an average team, Scotty. Right? Like, you hear that all the time in handicapping. Well, they need it, so they're going to win. No, that's one of the reasons why they won't win. Pressure is on them. The other team is playing with house money. They can run trick plays. They, they're right. under no pressure. They don't, you know, hey, we lost, we win, we lose. And, and another thing is, too, even bad teams, guys, they end strong. It's the last game of the year. Guys need bonuses. Guys need, man, if I pop this fumble loose, I got another 200K. There's a lot of little games within the games that are going on in the final right. week of the season. Guys that are being, you know what? I'm out of here. I want to rack up one last game for my stats, and I'm a free agent. There's all kinds of stuff going on here, Scotty. But with that being said, I do think Buffalo's going to beat Miami. This Baltimore line's out of control. It was four down to three right now. Right. But you know the Harbaugh's. These guys are as competitive as it gets. Harbaugh won 24 consecutive freaking preseason games, all right? So they're going to be in this game. A great teaser tomorrow, in my opinion, is we'll tease the Baltimore Ravens. Tease the Baltimore Ravens up to 10, seven-point teaser. They're three-point underdogs, so we'll have the Ravens plus 10, and the Colts are one-point underdogs on their home field, Scotty. I'll tease the Colts up to plus eight. I'm expecting both these games on Saturday to be tight and very close games. So if you weren't teasing... Uh, these two games, would you Baltimore think? Baltimore and Indy. Baltimore and Indy, no matter what. So your your Bills are in, Steelers are out. You're sticking it right in my chest. I get it. Uh, and then uh, have your way. So what about But at the least Jags? he didn't have a losing I, record, right? <laughs> well, I think the Steelers are going to win. And I think the Bills are going to lose now. I'm doing that just to F with you. And then I need the Jaguars <laughs> to lose to the Titans. So I think that's going to happen, too. And then I'm hoping for the we could both uh, just Texans pull for that Scotty. in a tie. We that game both, ends in a and, tie. We're going to be on together on Sunday too, so we'll both be pulling for that. Because no matter what happens, if the Jags lose and you win, we're in too. 
Like yeah, the Bills and Steelers you. get in. Then I play you. I if, think the, if the, the Bills Steelers win. Play yeah, the Bills. yeah, right. If the Bills would then win. I There's a lot of crazy you. things. I will hate God. you and Carver High forever. Look, look forward to that game. I know, there's a lot of wild stuff that can go on here. Uh, still, a lot of stuff that could be played out. We well, you know what my best bet, Scotty, in the NFL is kind of a random right. bet. Is the uh, Los Angeles Rams and the San Francisco 49ers. The total is 41 points in this football game. The 49ers already have the top seed wrapped up. Right. This is a this is a walkthrough scrimmage for them uh, to avoid getting anybody injured. Meanwhile, right. the Los Angeles Rams have already locked their playoff spot. They're already in. Yeah, and yes, whatever you can argue, oh, for seed, whatever. They're they're not winning the division. They're a wild card. And you know as well as I do, Sean McVay's not the type of guy that cares about who he plays and seeds and stuff. Like they're in, they're a dangerous team. If they cared, they wouldn't be starting Carson Wentz. We'll put it that way. So what right? do you think? Just the under? L- love the under, Scotty, 41. This is going to be both of them. They might even play each other in the playoffs in a couple of weeks again. They're just both going to hand a ball off for three hours. It's going to be like an Army-Navy game. Who wins the uh, Falcons-Saints game in New Orleans? That matters, too. Train wreck. Give me the Saints. Saints find a way. But it, but it won't matter. Yeah, you know why? Because I'm not sure Heineke's going to play, Scotty. It looks like it could be Ritter. You can't tell you can't trust Ritter. But I think the Bucs are going to beat the Panthers anyways and get it done. All right, uh, Marenzi, I will see you Sunday at 1 o'clock, 10 o'clock your time for in-game live all access. Have a good sports rage tonight, my man. Go Blue. can run the football, work off a of play action. They can move the football, put up points. Does fall on McCarthy, but I like Michigan's chances in this ball game. National championship set. Washington against Michigan. Brothers in arms today. This is it. This is the most excited I think I've ever been for a day of work in my entire life. Quarterback at quarterback. We're going to lay some juice. We're going to have some dog prices. We're going to go right in the middle. Because I don't know what they're doing. To me, they're in a complete rebuild, Kev. Go run, run, run. That's where overbackers on this 51 and a half shot. So right now he's a little bit more over money, but it's hovering right around. The winner of this game will be the division. Four. I don't care if they win because all we care about is the money, baby. The money. Pro football today. It's smarter to be on sports grid. We spent all off season where the NFL said, hey, just so you guys know, running backs don't matter. If we then this year give the MVP to a running back, the irony. I am disappointed that they lost to FAU because secretly I don't really like this FAU team very much. I I don't know. They're just not for me. And now they've completely legitimized the Owls. Game time decisions only on SportsGrid. North Carolina, we've got new sports books operating for uh, licenses and you know a lot of news always coming out of there one of the fresh sports uh betting states well they're a little behind the ball there so i don't know if they'll be at the starting line in north carolina um but yeah a really interesting mix of of applicants this early on so far newswire only on sports grid sports grid your 24-7 sports wagering network. Fantasy Sports Today. They were saying there's no way. He could not possibly do this. He won't hold out. Pro League Soccer They're powered by Marco. teams in the league. They have 80 goals so far. College Football Today. The Hawks team total in the first half is point five zero point five. Pro Football Today. Interesting props in this game, but I would be cautious laying this number here with the Houston Texans.
in game live all access in terms of these wild cards in terms of the playoff in game live prime time I, rich i don't know man this is this is just been one of those games that doesn't make a lick of sense in game far. live overtime you want to give you over three to one on a pretty good team it's hard not to take some flyers football full circle well NFL officials stink. They always will stink, and they'll always ruin the game. You know, that's, that's just part of what it is. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Carver, hi. I got to get this all straight. We've been under a lot of pressure. Uh, Mr. Steichen is speaking about his big game. Uh, Dolts, Texans, tomorrow night. Like I said, Steelers, Ravens, and then that game, that is as thick as it gets. Uh, very thick indeed for Saturday night. Uh, the winner will be in the playoffs in the AFC. Of course, we have a couple of first-year head coaches, some young teams. Uh, Shane Steichen says, everybody's got to grow up quick. This is a playoff game. You've been a part of playoff games, obviously. Has this week kind of felt like a playoff preparation? It is. I mean, it's it's win or go home, so it, it, it is, for sure. How easy or hard has it been to prepare for the Texans? When you, you played them once, but it was so long ago, and, you know, Anthony was out there, and just teams seemed to have changed a lot since then. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, schematically, you got to look at if they've switched up things. Um, obviously, they're looking at us, um, but they're a different team. Obviously, they're playing good football. Um, they've kind of gelled and, you know, found their chemistry, and uh, it'll be good. It'll be a great atmosphere on Saturday night. We're fired up for it. I like his hoodie, and um, I will say this. I think he's done a great job with the Colts this year in his first year, and he's done it all with Gardner Minshew. I mean, honestly, I think Richardson's a badass. He is a problem for defenses and they have a bright future with him. I really believe that. And I think this guy did a great job, but I still don't like him tomorrow night against that uh, Stroud and Texans team. Uh, you know, they killed him once. I've seen it with my own eyes. Why not again? I mean, they got the better quarterback. That's all there is to it. And, you know, at some level you have to start betting on players here. This is about players, not about, you know, where they play or who's calling the game or who the coach is. In most cases, to me, you know, fair enough, some coaches are a difference. But for me, a majority of it is players. I'm going to bet on that Stroud over Minshew. That's just the way I'm rolling. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm on the over uh, 47 and a half. Uh, these cold games at home at Lucas Oil have all been a little off the rails. So uh, that's where I'm going to stick. It's still Texans minus one. Um, I, I think the game can kind of go either way. Uh, but I'm just going to stick with the over, Scotty. I'm not going to get involved. Uh, at all on who's going to win it. So the winner of that game would have an opportunity to win the AFC South if the Jaguars lose on Sunday. The Jaguars, Scotty, hold the keys for a lot of people here uh, in the AFC with this game against the Titans. Trevor Lawrence, questionable, did do some stuff in practice this week. He could be a go to get back into the lineup. I played this earlier in the week when you're here. It was too good. I want to get pumped up because we both want the Titans to win this game. Let's hear Mike Vrabel saying why he thinks He's going to have his squad ready uh, for a meaningless game on their end in week 18. Because it sucks to lose, Gentry. Uh, Trey, you ever need to show you anything? Uh, Did you have you another know? thought or no? I'm just curious. Why? Well, it uh, it it sucks. <laughs> Losing. Awful. Yeah. That's why I want to win. Because <laughs> you don't sleep. You want to win for the players that bust their tail. That's it. Your yeah, boy. like, uh, <laughs> let's face facts. That was great. I like him <laughs> just lighting people up. And losing does suck. I told you, you know, you remember all your losses. You don't even remember yep. the wins. I've been on so many title teams in basketball that won chips, and I don't remember any of the guys even on my team. But I remember every loss like it was yesterday. And he's right about another thing. Like, I've lost undefeated four times, and I never slept for a week. Oh, you just can't get over it. Can't get over it. Uh, Titans getting four home on Sunday. 41 flat is the total. 
We're on it, Scotty. Let's go. We're on the Titans on Sunday. Take we down are. the Jags for both of us. Let's get the Bills and the Steelers in on Sunday. I am on the Titans, and I hope they take his head off. That would be Trevor <laughs> Lawrence's head off. Like, I, you know, uh, back to the old theory, kill the quarterback, win the game. Kill the quarterback. He's already banged uh, up. It. Take his head uh, off. If you got such a great pass rush, which is what they sell in Tennessee, that they got this pass rush. Okay, well then, let's see it take his head off. Uh, it will also be Scotty Ryan Tannehill for the Titans as Will Levis uh, banged up, uh, not going to be able to play here this last game of the season. So uh, it will be Ryan Tannehill and what will probably be, I would guess, his last game as a Tennessee Titan as well, Scotty. Maybe we get him out on top uh, too uh, after his few years. I'll tell you what, I I don't deny that Will Levis is the future with his big ass uh, guns and his big arm and his size. I like all that commodity he's got going on. But the reality is, for this one game that I need, I'll take the veteran Tannehill over that wild. Uh, he'll take chances like no one's business. Levis, he'll throw it. I mean, he, he'll sling 70-yard bombs. He doesn't even care if the guy's anywhere near the ball. He just throws it. I think Tannehill's going to manage the game smarter than Levis. Uh, I'll take the veteran uh, tomorrow or Sunday. I'll take him over the kid. Thank you. I'm going to go with Tannehill one more time, and then I don't care what happens to him. The biggest game on the card on Sunday will be the Sunday night game, last game of the regular season. It will be the Bills and the Dolphins down in Miami at Hard Rock. Of course, this is for the AFC East, the two seed. Depending on what happens in those other games, the Bills might be playing to be in the playoffs, period. Josh Allen, Scotty, in his last 11 games against Miami, 9-2, 31 touchdowns, 5 interceptions, He's ran for 600 yards, and he scored five rushing touchdowns. So uh, 36 touchdowns altogether in those 11 games. But he says, of course, all of that does not matter when they step on the field on Sunday night. I mean, I think every game's different. You know, each game's got its specific flow. And, um, again, just, just trying with football games uh, no matter what it takes. And uh, I've, played, I've played well against them um, in the past, but it doesn't mean I'm going to play well against them this week unless I, you know, prepare well and, and work hard in practice and get on the same page as the receivers and, you know, the five guys up front do their job and the receivers catch the ball. So it takes everybody to do that. So, um, you know, we're, we're, we're looking forward to having a good week of practice and putting our best foot forward. Oh, God, is he boring. Honestly, he's like, he might as well be a minister uh, now with his boring answers. Here's the deal. I don't care what he's done uh, in the past. Uh, I know he's owned them. I know how good he is. We all know that. What I need is the uh, Dolphins to win the game. Now, the Dolphins were all banged up when they played the Cowboys, and I laid one, and they won by two. The Dolphins are all banged up going into this big game of the Bills, and everybody thinks the Bills have an automatic walk in the park on Sunday night that, it, oh, Josh Allen never loses ever to the Miami Dolphins. He's 95-0. and 0. Greatest quarterback in the history of the world with all of his no rings. So I'll take the Dolphins. I need the Dolphins. I told you already. Screw you and your team. And then if my team is eliminated, I will root for the Bills until their death as my priority one. 1A will be Bills, no one else. But until that time, screw you, Carver High, Stop. and the horse you rode in on. And all your friends, and that includes Marenzi too. So what you're saying is, is that if the Ravens beat the Steelers tomorrow, you'll be rooting for the Bills on Sunday night. If the if the yes. Steelers lose that game, you'll root for the Bills. There you if, go. We'll take that. I'll, uh, I'll root please. for the Bills permanently on the rest of this season because I hate the Kansas City Chiefs. Yes, and that's all the that Ravens, matters. All these teams, Ravens, Chiefs, all that. You don't want to see any. I of those still think the Ravens will beat the Bills. I think the Ravens are the best team in the NFL, and they're better than the 49ers, too. People forget real quick how stupid they are. Uh, Christmas night, they ran over them. Like, I mean, it was like Jeremy Renner getting run over by that snow cat. I told you, they just ran right over them. Lines down to two and a half. The total's 48 and a half. It's a lot of emotion for me. Obviously, I'll be rooting for them to win. I'm scared as hell of it. I like the under 48 and a half. 
I think the Bills are going to run the football a lot uh, and try to win that way. Uh, so I'm going to go with the under, uh, Scotty, in that Miami Bill game. Right. Uh, on the NFC side, the Tampa Bay Bucks have a win and win the NFC South. They are in Carolina against the Panthers. Yesterday we heard from Baker Mayfield. He's going to give it a go with his rib injury. Here's Todd Bowles. You can't ask for anything more uh, than controlling your own destiny in the last game. Oh, we've been stressing that all year. You got to earn everything. Like I told him, nobody's going to give you anything. You earn everything you get in this league. And whether you're the best of teams or the worst of teams, you're going to earn everything you get every week. That's all you can ask for. You know, we're looking forward to it. We understand where we are. We're happy to be in this spot playing positive football in December, trying to get in the playoffs. So we control our own narrative. It's up to us to win it. I mean, honestly, can we just have this team go kick the Panthers' ass? Because they're awful. Uh, they are uh, awful. And the Buccaneers are not. They got steamrolled by the Saints. They need to bounce back and go and beat the crappiest team in the NFL. That's who, that's who they're playing. They are playing the worst team in the NFL this year. Four and a half is the number. 37 and a half is the total. I, I got to tell you, I, I think that that's what should happen. But. This NFC South has been so stupid all year. It really has with these four teams, uh, especially Tampa and Atlanta and New Orleans. I, I could just see uh, Tampa screwing this up. Uh, I'm taking the four and a half with Carolina. Tampa will probably win. They're going to make it a real sweat uh, down to the end. But I'm going to take the Panthers with the four yeah, and a half. Not me. Uh, <laughs> I don't believe in the Panthers at all. I think the uh, Buccaneers will win the game by two touchdowns. Uh, the two teams, of course, that are waiting, if the Panthers for some reason did win that game, are the Falcons and the Saints. They will play in New Orleans. Right now, Saints minus three, flat 42 is the total for this one. Ice cold Heineke light, Scotty, now questionable. He looked awful last week against the Bears. Uh, but right now, Saints minus three, who are coming off that big win against the Bucs, as you mentioned. Yeah, I don't care who plays for the Falcons. It could be... Uh, Heineken, Ritter, they're going to lose to the Saints in New Orleans. The Saints have started, you know, playing good football all of a sudden. They kicked the Buccaneers' ass at Raymond James. They're going to play in the Superdome. They're going to win the game, and that'll be the end of not only the Falcons, but I do believe after they lose and choke out that they're going to fire Art Smith. Uh, He certainly deserves it. I read a couple stories down there this week that, now, Arthur Blank doesn't like making big changes and doing oh, all that. Oh, he like, makes one every three could, years. How could you possibly bring this guy back after the year that they had this year? Uh, it would be really stunning to me, Scotty, if they did that uh, because they, they have talent. Uh, and for them to go potentially 7-10 and 10 after they lose this game, that's an awful job uh, by him. Uh, all right, we have uh, a couple of other games to get to. I don't have enough time to run you, Matt LaFleur. I will do that at the top of the next hour uh we will come back we have the sharp report too we are going to get warren's thoughts on a game we did talk about houston and indianapolis and then scotty at the top we'll get into this bear packer game very big of course packers are going to be win and get in at lambeau against justin fields and the bears there's all kinds of anticipation for that game at lambeau also Uh, Seattle has a huge game. They have to win at Arizona. I won't be surprised at all if they fall on their faces again. I think the Steelers ended their season last week. I say they go and fall on their face. Dallas has to play at the dump in Landover. Philly is playing like crap, and they're playing at Snoopy. And the Giants have been actually playing good football, competitive. Tyrod Taylor, they're going to be in that game with Philly as much as they were on Christmas. can run the football, work off a of play action. They can move the football, put up points. Does fall on McCarthy, but I like Michigan's chances in this ball game. National championship set. Washington against Michigan. Brothers in arms today. This is it. This is the most excited I think I've ever been for a day of work in my entire life. 
quarterback at quarterback. We're going to lay some juice. We're going to have some dog prices. And we're going to go right in the middle. Because I don't know what they're doing. To me, they're in a complete rebuild, Kev. Go run, run, run. That's where overbackers on this 51 and a half shot. So right now, he's a little bit more over money, but it's hovering right around. The winner of this game. They'll be the division. Four. I don't care if they win because all we care about is the money, baby. The money. Pro football today. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. We spent all off season where the NFL said, "Hey, just so you guys know, running backs don't matter." If we then this year give the MVP to a running back, the irony. I am disappointed that they lost to FAU because secretly I don't really like this FAU team very much. I don't don't know. They're just not for me. And now they've completely legitimized the Owls. Game time decisions only on SportsGrid. North Carolina, we've got new sports books operating for uh, licenses. And, you know, a lot of news always coming out of there. One of the fresh sports uh, betting states. Well, they're a little behind the ball there. So I don't know if they'll be at the starting line in North Carolina. Um, but yeah, a really interesting mix of, of applicants this early on so far. Newswire, only on Sports Grid. Sports Grid, your 24 7 sports wagering network. Fantasy Sports Today. They were saying there's no way he could not possibly do this. He won't hold out. Pro League Soccer, They're powered by Marco. teams in the league. They have 80 goals so far. College Football Today. The Hawks team total in the first half is point five zero point five. Pro football today. Interesting props in this game, but I would be cautious laying this number here with the Houston Texans. In game live all access. In terms of these wild cards, in terms of the playoff. In game live prime time. Uh, Rich, I don't know, man. This is this has just been one of those games that doesn't make a lick of sense. In game live overtime. You want to give you over three to one on a pretty good team. It's hard not to take some flyers. Football full circle. Well, NFL officials stink. They always will stink, and they'll always ruin the game. You know, that's, that's just part of the reason. It's smarter to be on sports grid. Let's break down the game in Indy at Lucas Oil between the Texas and the Colts with the Sharp Report. When C.J. Stroud faces this defense of the Indianapolis Colts, he's going to find a lot to like. First of all, they play cover three at by far the highest rate in the NFL. And that's a great thing for Stroud because he absolutely destroys cover three. He ranks number one in the following metrics against cover three. Number one in EPA per attempt, number four in success rate, number two in yards per attempt, and number one in percentage of attempts that gain 15 plus yards. The Indianapolis Colts also are a very passive defense. They don't blitz a lot. They don't get a lot of pressure. And C.J. Stroud has the second highest splits positively when he does not get pressure. Against no pressure, he's number two in EPA, number seven in success, and number three in yards per attempt. That drops all the way down to number 27 in EPA, 35 in success rate, and number 30 in yards per attempt when he is pressured. And last but not least, take a look at the quarterbacks that this defense of the Indianapolis Colts have gone up against. It is an absolutely pathetic list of quarterbacks. Let's follow this. Aiden O'Connell, who is a backup. Taylor Heineke, who is a backup. Mitch Trubisky, who is a backup and now benched. Jake Browning, who is a backup. Will Levis, who is a rookie. Baker Mayfield, Mac Jones, who is now benched, and Bryce Young, who is a rookie. They've played four straight backups, and over those last two months, they have played a terrible list of quarterbacks. Now they're going up against C.J. Stroud, who feasts on cover three, who feasts when he's not pressured. Recipe for success for C.J. Stroud to look really good in this game, as well as for Nico Collins to go off, in my opinion. So, Carver High, what do you think? Uh, Are you going to believe in Minshew and his receivers, Pittman and company, and Jonathan Taylor? Or are you going to buy in on Stroud to keep going off like he has usually when he starts? I've been doubting the Colts all year. Uh, I'm not going to 
uh, go after them again. Uh, Colts will probably win uh, the way that, that they're going. Bloody humanity's on the Colts of all things.